Remember to right click on the PM66 icon and choose run as administrator then click yes to the warning window and you're ready to go. Go ahead and plug in your USB 6M board to any available open USB port and uh, you want to click check board first of all first off and see here that the board checks out fine. A couple of things you want to make sure uh, as far as settings go. Interface should be key. Your voice output should be DAC for external amp. Your volume should be normal. Uh, a couple of things we want to talk about here are the keys and the trigger functions. Now this is a USB 6M with a light sensor slash PIR and optional PIR. Uh, the light sensor and PIR are actually uh, K5, key K5. Um, keys K1 through K4 are activated by the buttons. Now there is a five-way switch, uh, which we're going to show you here in a second with labels um, <clears throat> on the USB 6M. And basically what that five-way switch does is determine which one of these keys gets played when the light sensor or PIR is triggered. Uh, by default, it would be K5 because <clears throat> the fifth position plays whatever you drop into K the K5, key K5. So uh, the other thing you want to be aware of here is the trigger function. And in our case, we want every key to be one shot non-retriggerable. Now you can experiment with this, but basically when using a PIR or a light sensor, we find that the one shot non-retriggerable works best so that if you have, particularly if you have a long message, uh, the light sensor every time it's triggered doesn't start the message over from the beginning. Uh, this one shot non-retriggerable will basically trigger the message once and even though the light sensor is still triggering uh, it's going to play the whole message without stopping. So uh, without further ado let's get programming. Let's let's go ahead and drop some of our demo wave files in right out of the PM66 uh, demo software file. Just click your drop down new wave and uh, you can see here that in your computer you will have this file in there will be PM66 and then we're in the demo wave uh, area. So in, in the first one we're going to just put the bubble wave file, open it, and we're going to leave these LP defaults uh, right where they are. Uh, playback rate here is 8K, that's also variable, defaulted at 8K. Uh, you can see 1.5 seconds at 8K playback rate. Uh, if you increase that rate you're going to take up more space uh, on your hard drive. So uh, unless you you know are playing, you need something with CD quality or or it's a, it's a song or something like that. 8K is generally acceptable. This number one column here is uh, tells you <clears throat> tells the board how you want the LED or the LED to uh, function upon playback. A blank means it's going to be off. On is obviously it's going to be on all the time. F0 or 1 both function the same way and that is a flash. You'll see that by default a 3 hertz flash uh, pops up. That means it's going to flash three times per second. Uh, you can also change that uh, depending on your application. For our application, we don't need an LED, so we're just going to leave it at the default blank. Um, now let's move on to key number two and drop something in, drop a wave file into to key K2. How about a doorbell? Okay, so we'll open it, leave everything else. Uh, defaultable, except remember we have to ch change the trigger function to one, sh one shot non-retriggerable. In key 3 we're going to do something um, interesting. We're going to use the groups over here and basically what the groups do is uh, depending on how many times you press K3 or which which time in succession you press the key is which uh, uh, wave file is going to play. So in group 1 which is the default uh, obviously we're going to a wave file in there. Let's go with a. Uh, let's go with a. Go with a horn. So the first time you play, uh, press uh, key K3, and again you want your one shot non retriggerable. The first time you press it, you're going to hear a horn. Uh, when you click over here on group two, you can now put a another wave file into K3. This is really what makes this software so pow powerful. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and put a horse into K3, group 2. So the second time you press key K3, you're going to hear a horse. 
The third time, you would hear a horn. Fourth time, you would hear a horse again. Okay, let's move to K4 now. Key K4, change our trigger function. Go ahead and open another WAV file. How about a lion? Okay, good. Um, uh, we can stack, now this is not group, a group, but when you press key K4, if we were to put another wave file here underneath the lion, uh, it would play that in succession. So uh, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's go with the lion. What do we want to combine the lion with? How about a lion motorcycle? Okay, good. So when you press uh, key K4, again, one shot non retrigerable you're going to hear a lion and then a motorcycle. Uh, and then and then the sound will be done. Uh, moving on to key K5. Now remember, K5 is the PIR sec section of the uh, of the board of the unit. So you do need to put a wave file in there if you want uh, uh, to utilize the fifth segment of the module. And in there, let's put uh, rooster, shall we? Everything else we're going to leave on the default. Now at this point you're ready to program the board. And to do that you just choose PM66. And give it a minute to go ahead and process and load all those WAV files onto your unit. Now in a minute I'm actually going to demonstrate the board and uh, show you a diagram with the keys labeled and the five-way switch. Uh, when this pops up you can unplug your board and uh, insert another one and click next PM66 to program it identically or click cancel and start over uh, programming the board, uh, a new board with different sounds or programming the same board with new sounds. Okay, here we have the USB 6M that we just programmed. And we're just gonna demonstrate the function. This is button one, it's your bubble sound. Button two, doorbell. Button three, you'll recall we used groups. So you get the horn, and then the horse, and then the horn again. Button four, we stacked the wave files under group one, so it's gonna play both the motorcycle and the lion. Actually, it was the lion first and then the motorcycle, but there you have it. Now, this is your five-way switch. That's position number five. And when we plug the light sensor in, it plays the rooster. And each time the light sensor triggers, it'll play the rooster. Now, if you want the light sensor to control any of these segments, all you have to do is set the uh, five-way switch to... The corresponding segment for example segment one which is the bubble or segment three the horse and the horn so essentially the light sensor functions exactly like one of the buttons and the five-way switch tells the module which segment to trigger Now the PIR sensor works the same way, except it takes a minute to reset. It takes a minute to reset, about 30 seconds or so. And I have this adjusted to the most sensitive position. You can use them in, in conjunction with each other so you get a light trigger or a PIR trigger. And there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed our video and uh, happy trails. Good luck with your programming.